to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of masculine spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. And soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now, here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is the bear coming to you from Waikiki Beach. I'm going to check out the surf. Hold on a second. Let me look out my window. Oh, the surf is coming up. We're going to have to cut this interview a little bit short, I guess. But we're here in Waikiki Beach. Just love being here. We're, we're directly above St. Augustine's Catholic Church. I can look down from my condo window and see basically where the altar is. And I uh, just love being here. The, the had some really beautiful surfing times and just been working really hard on season two of long ride home uh which should be coming out about the time this radio show airs um season two we rode from Cocoa beach florida down to key west rode rode uh iron horses with archbishop wensky he's one gnarly biker you can't keep up with him we ended up going down the opening day of lobster season which is the worst day you could choose because we're in 5,000 degree heat from our um, motorcycles and 5,000 degree heat from the pavement and 5,000 degree heat from the sun. And we were just boiling like lobsters. But uh, we had a great ride with the, with the Archbishop, some great teaching on the virtues came out of that. And then we rolled thunder up to Cocoa Beach, up to uh, Father uh, Brian Woodrow and Coach uh, uh, John's, uh, uh, the church, the, well, it's St. John the Evangelist Church, I believe is the correct word, but Coach McKenna. Uh, his uh, his uh, Rocky Balboa gym. I made all the guys work out in there. and It's just a great show. So get ready. Go to the deepadventure.com website. It's a brand new website, and we have a special thing running for the, for the the through the summer. Anyone who makes a donation at any level of $5 and above is going to get a free copy of my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. So get on it and support our cause. The radio show, we receive no revenue from EWTN for it, and just a, a uh, uh, a small portion for, for filming Long Ride Home, so we need your help. Go to our website. Hey, you guys, um, you know who the biggest, baddest bouncer is on the block? It's Jesus Christ. He stands and he's before the Father, and he says, no one can come to the Father but by me. So you don't get to heaven except through a personal encounter with Jesus Christ one way or another. And I just remember one of my greatest, I love, I love, uh, I love the Old Testament. I love the stories of the Old Testament. And the encounter that uh, Jacob had with God in the desert at night by himself, uh, the, uh, the angel of the Lord, which was a um, you know, pre-incarnate uh, presence of Jesus Christ, he wrestled, with, he wrestled with Jesus. He fought with Jesus. And uh, you know, I've taken my little, little bit of I'm second degree ninja black belt. We have some of our grappling, and we've taken some of the Gracie stuff and a little bit of Aikido. And uh, what happens when I'm losing is I grab onto the person that's beating me up. You see that in a fight. The fighter gra gra ha hangs on for dear life to the person that's beating him to a pulp because then the guy can't swing so hard. He can't get so much leverage. Right now in your life, you may be wrestling with God. And that's okay. It's okay to be real and to be honest with God and to recognize in that, in that, in that grappling, uh, honest, a search for God, you come to a realization that he's God and you're not. And you can fight and you can resist him, but Jesus wants you to be set free. He wants to break your chains. He wants to introduce you to his Father. He wants to introduce you to his love. And what eventually happens when you're losing your fight is you just start clinging to, to your opponent. And when and as the night rolled on, um, uh, Jacob said these words to Jesus, I will not let go until you uh, bless me. And Jesus hit him right in the hip socket. And so he walked with a limp, uh, probably, maybe, maybe he walked with a limp, I don't know, but probably for the rest of his life, which is what we learn to do as Christians is to hesitate before we leap. We check in with Jesus, God, not my will, but your will be done. That's the act of total surrender that Jacob had with Jesus at that encounter. During that wrestling match with Jesus, he said, Lord, I'm abandoning myself to the wild adventure, the most radical adventure that can be, and that is to give my life solely to you and to be led by you. And so Jesus blessed him and even gave him a new name, Israel. And so you have a, a, a new name written in heaven. Uh, Jesus is grappling with you. You're grappling with him. Don't let go. 
The whole key is to just clinch, clinch with him and let him in, impart his love and his hope and his power. And, and, uh, and you know what happens after you, sometimes after you have a, a, a good fight, uh, especially in the dojo, uh, oh man, you have the best relationship with that person afterwards because you've had this encounter and there's sort of a dignity and a respect you, you gain from each other. So um, why, don't, why did I talk about wrestling today? Because uh, we have as our guest, Jerome Richter, uh, he is uh, the, in charge of the advancement at um, U- University of Mary in Bismarck, North Dakota. But he was a wrestler. He's a wrestling coach. And so we got to welcome our, our wrestler, uh, wrestler on call, Jerome Richter. Aloha, Jerome. Bear, it's great to be with you. And uh, with an introduction like that, I'm going to bring you into the wrestling room for our university team for nationals to get them fired up. Hey, dude, I really want to come and speak to that university at some point. You just got to drag me over there. So are they are they in nationals? No, no, no. They just finished. We had two uh, All-Americans uh, wow. this year. One, one of them, uh, Tate Barnhart, a fine young man, 4.0, going into uh, pre-dentistry. I've watched him grow up his whole life. And uh, that's that's what's so beautiful about it is uh, we're not only producing outstanding athletes, but uh, men of great virtue and women of great virtue. But, but uh, athleticism, you know, competing in athletics brings out the, the, the virtues, at least the four cardinal virtues. And when you're... I, I, when, <laughs> go ahead. I, I was just going to say it reveals whether or not you have the virtues, and it gives you uh, an avenue to teach them and to work on them, very much so, because you need the whole person, right? You need the mind, the body, the soul. You need everything there, and uh, the sports, especially wrestling, and I'll defend wrestling my entire life. It's the best sport to teach virtue because it's not just about the competition. It's about what you eat. It's about what you're thinking. It's about how you're praying. It's about how you're a teammate, but at the same time, no excuses, buddy. It's you and the other you're guy the on the mat. You're the only guy on the mat. I mean, that's that's a pretty challenging thing. It's like football, you can hide under your helmet when you make a mistake. Uh, maybe they won't see your name on the back of your jersey, but with wrestling and grappling, that's it, dude. It's you. It's you and the other guy. And when you blow it, the whole world sees it. And That's you're right. Sure. You have to. You have to be uh, to be lean and mean and be and be ready for the fight. So, um, what is the what is the guillotine in Greek? I see it by the back. By the way, those of you who are watching this on our YouTube version, uh, you can go to our, our website deepadventure.com to get access to that. In the background, you have Greek, Greek Greco-Roman or Gre- Greek style wrestling. So- yeah, it's yeah. a it's a statue. It's a statue actually from Athens. Uh, I had the privilege of traveling over to Greece uh, once and uh, picked up the statue, and it's two Greek wrestlers, and uh, they're they're in a position to where the top wrestler who's in control is putting the other one in a guillotine, where he he leverages the other arm and he goes underneath it and behind his neck, and we called it growing up the guillotine. And, and we, so when I saw it yeah. over there, I was like, holy cow. Uh, that that's still being taught today. Okay, uh, here's my deal, Jerome. Um, I'll be there in Athens in about well, by even before this airs, I'll have been in Athens. Holy cow! So I'm gonna go get that statue, and I'll, I'll have that. I'll have that in my office. It's just a great statue. Now in uh, in the Gracie style MMA, a guillotine is a different thing. It's I think it's more of a chokehold. But um, with that one, that now the other thing is Greco-Roman wrestling. You're not going to be hitting someone in the throat or eye gouging or anything like that. This is where this is a, a how does it score? What are the points? Well, so Greco Roman would be uh, different than what most. Well, let's people talk are about your style. Your style. Your yeah. style wrestling. So there, there's there's three different styles of wrestling. If you're watching the Olympics, you're watching freestyle or Greco Roman freestyle. Um, you know, kind of anything goes. Uh, you know, shooting on the legs, throws, etc. Greco Roman is just all upper body. You can't touch the legs. So really? It's, it's a, How do you yep. do that? Jeez. It's all th- it's all throws. So it's all leveraging wow. there. But the real wrestling, I would call it, is what we call and uh, everybody calls folk style. So this is what uh, Division One, Division Two high schools wrestle. You got to be good at every position. And so that's what we grew up wrestling was folk style. And uh, I, I know we'll probably have a chance to get here, but uh, I grew up on a dairy farm. And so the you're first the wrestling second I, person from a dairy farm in a row now. You're kidding. No. So you, what did you do? Well, every, you, everything good comes from a dairy farm. Yeah. Sooner or later. And so, so you like, you like protein. That 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 that's true. <laughs> that's true. But like, and, so and what? They, you got strong lifting those calves or what? Well, that was one of the first places that uh, you learned how to uh, 
understand kinetics and how bodies move and force moves. And so we used to work all of our cattle, not only the dairy cows, we also had 150 head of beef cattle. Ooh. And every spring we would uh, work the cattle, which is branding them and castrating them and giving shots. And uh, because dad had so many of us boys, there was 10 of us boys that he, <laughs> he figured he didn't have to invest in any of the normal tools to hold them down. Had so we, we had to do Well, it. listen, we're already at the end of this first break. Uh, Jerome Richter, who is the officer in charge of advancement at uh, University of Mary in Bismarck, North Dakota. Uh, but, you know, I got to tell you, uh, I'm a CPA too, man. So I worked in El Paso, Texas. Uh, we were out in a huge ranch in uh, Mexico. And we took aerial, we took photographs to try to count the cattle so you get one shot. But thousands and thousands, you know how you count cattle? I don't know if you do this, in, but in the CPA land, you count their legs and divide by four. <laughs> That's our only accounting joke. <laughs> anyway, we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure and Jerome Richter from the University of Mary in Bismarck, North Dakota. Aloha and welcome back to the Man Cave. Hey, if you're not a member of the Man Cave or your man isn't a member of the Man Cave, remember our ministry is for everyone, men and women. We have this specific though outreach for men called Bears Man Cave. You go to our website, you sign up, you have to go there to sign up. I think it's $15 a month now. And then the men have access to our private Facebook group. And we have men there that will challenge, equip, mobilize. We share what, what's, we, we share our challenges. We share what our inspirations. We, we, uh, we have every two or three weeks, we have a meetup using the Zoom video technology. So everybody sees everybody, everybody can talk to everybody. And we, we lead a one hour discussion on the virtues uh, with my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtues. So we model what it means to have a men's group. And uh, normally we're having a cigar, maybe a shot of whiskey while we do it. It's just, it's just a relaxed format. A lot of the people that you want to evangelize aren't ready to go to that man as you uh, event yet. We, we love that man as you, but maybe they'd come to the back porch of your, ca of your deck have a cigar with a few other guys and then talk story uh, using one of my books or, 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 or our Seven Virtues Cigar Sampler, which is pretty cool, too, because you can't smoke a cigar because each, each cigar has a, one of the – each of the seven different blends has a different one of the seven virtues there, so you have to unpeel the label to smoke it, and then you get a little lesson and a little way to start a conversation. So come join the Man Cave, deepadventure.com, our brand-new website. We're talking with Jerome Richter. He is the uh, – I guess, what would you say, is the Director of Advancement, or what is your official title? Uh, my official title is Vice President for Public Affairs, so I oversee the Office of Public Affairs and Mission Advancement. Awesome. So, so um, you're, you're good with people. That's what they tell me. I don't well, know if it's true. Well, we'll see about that. We'll put you, we'll put you, <laughs> <laughs> we'll put you to the test. But uh, So you were raised on a farm, and then uh, with a lot of brothers, which I had yep. no brothers. I had no brothers, so that was oh, wow. really... I had three sisters, so I learned how to be good to women. But I paid my dues on the playground, man, fighting, fighting other guys when I was younger. But you know, you you live there right in Bismarck, North Dakota. The first, the first tall building I ever went to was I think the Capitol building, and I think it was maybe eight stories or something. And it freaked me out to go up there and look down. And I, because I was born, my dad was raised in Wilton, a coal mining town, or used to used to be. Yeah. And then I was born in Powers Lake, but I'm kind of like Father Mitch Pacwa. I was born in Powers Lake, North Dakota, but got to Hawaii just as fast as I could. You know, but I have there's, roots. There's reasons. I have roots in in the in the Dakotas. My love for the plains, my love for the right. for the whole the whole Native American Indian culture. I read my share of uh, Louis. I read all of Louis Lamore books. He was hmm. a great author from I think Jamestown, right? Yep. And so I mean, I just love the the West, and I think the kind of West kind of starts right there and in Bismarck, basically, as far as I'm concerned. But, um, yeah, so so have you ever heard of Powers Lake? Absolutely. I can't believe it, Bear. You're from North Dakota. And, yeah. and it, pro it proves my theory that all good things sooner or later come from North Dakota. Oh, I've heard another from theory. The plains. I've heard another What's theory. That? They said when I left North Dakota, the general IQ of the Dakotas went up. North Dakota went up <laughs> about 20%. <laughs> and Hawaii's so, went down 30 so... Well, Wil Wilton's only gosh, what is Wilton? Forty miles north of town here. Oh man, and my my grandpa, oh, no. my grand my grandfather won a, a farm down in the Missouri in a, a camp playing poker. What the a big heck? old hundred and fifty acre farm. Of course, we don't have it anymore, but but I remember going down there and the muddy rivers, the buttes on the opposite side, and uh, going over those gra gravel roads. Are there still a lot of gravel roads in the Dakotas? 
Oh, sure, sure. Well, we're I coming. Mean, Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, w- I was just going to say uh, North Dakota is just one of these places, and I've had the chance to travel the world, where uh, it's tough living. I'll be honest. Um, there, There's cold winters. Uh, when it is nice out, the wind likes to blow. We don't exactly have, you know, a lot of trees. I remember each farmhouse kind of surrounded by trees to yep. block the wind, right? But just sure, it's just the wind howling, yeah. Wow. But what we do have, <laughs> and I would I would argue this uh, until I'm blue in the face, is some of the be- finest people in the whole wide world, because uh, they know how to live in community. They rely on each other, and there's still a, a grittiness and a toughness that uh, the people of North Dakota have because. Uh, it takes a little bit to make sure that you're you're ready for a good long winter, that you're ready to go out hunting in the fall, that you're ready to plant in the spring, even though the floods are coming. And you don't so, get in your pajamas uh, so, and go to you don't get in your pajamas and drive in a car to go to the local Seven Eleven and get a cup of coffee like my sister tried to do once uh, when we were visiting. I, and I said, no, you could have a, if you have a car problem, you're going to die. No. You better it's always possible. go prepared. Yeah. No, no. Well, listen. So here, here's the thing. You know, I got I got um, we're going to be rolling thunder through the Dakotas. On, our, on my TV show. Oh, wow. Yeah, Wonderful. we're not sure exactly when, but I have a thought. We're supposed to roll Thunder up to Lansing, Michigan, to meet with the Knights on Bikes up there in August. And, of course, my, I love the Catholic Cross Bears Motorcycle Ministry with Eric Wardrum. But Ace Bagley with Knights on Bikes, four th- over 4,000 members, is on our board of directors. We're going to roll up there. They're, they're both having different meetups, uh, 200 miles apart, 4,000 bi- 1,000 bikers showing up. We're going to go hmm. up the Upper Peninsula, down to Milwaukee, over to Minneapolis, I wonder if we should end our ride in Bismarck. We have a campus with a beautiful view of the Missouri River. It's one of the finest places you'll ever uh, be in May, June, and July. I can't argue. Well, we're going to be there in August. (laughs) August August will work, too. Well, you know, it'd be really cool. We we wouldn't be there till late, uh, maybe the third week of August. But um, because then the next season we were going to drive through the Dakotas and to where I used to have a cabin up at North Fork of the Flathead River in Glacier Park. Uh Wow. Go up to Calgary and meet the men up there and stuff. So we may well be at, in Bismarck this August. If Great. not, it'll be no, the next let one. Let me know. Yeah. Let me know. Hey, so, you know, I remember there used to be uh, uh, an Indian village across the, the Missouri River there. And when you went across to it, they weren't on daylight savings time. Like, you know, there was like Hawaii. They didn't change. But I remember these lodges there. And one of them was pointed out to me said, that's a sweat lodge. Mm-hmm. You ever been in one? Yep. Is that uh, how they, that's how they say it in the Dakotas, you guys? Yep. <laughs> that's how the vice president of development. You ever been? So tell, I want to hear about that. I would like to hear the dynamic of that, why you were there, what you experienced. Uh, that's a amazing uh, question that you've asked, and uh, it's beautiful that you bring it up. Let me, let me start back with just a little bit. So Mandan, which is across the river, which is actually named after a Native American tribe, the city of Mandan. There was the Mandan Indians that lived right along the Missouri River. Most of them died out very early because of smallpox. But they mm. were sedimentary people. They lived in huts, not like the Sioux people that were nomadic and had teepees. And they were big domed people. mud huts, weren't they? Yep, yep. Yeah, they I remember. Four or five families in there. I would say at the base there are 30 feet in diameter, something like that. Mm-hmm. But what you saw, and you remember, and you have a good memory, is uh, on a slant Indian village is what they call it. On a slant Indian village. On a slant. So yeah. it's in honor of the uh, Mandan people and where they would have lived along the river, which is just north of Fort Abraham Lincoln, which is just on the other side of the river here, which is where Geor- General George Armstrong Custer was stationed in the 7th Calvary uh, before he rode out to the Battle of Little Bighorn, and we know that didn't end so well for Yeah, him. I've been there several times to that battleground. It's lesson learned. <laughs> yeah, so it was right here in uh, Mandan, North Dakota, where he was stationed wow. uh, in 1876 that he, that he took off. But then if you go down the river, you'll end up uh, on the Standing Rock uh, Sioux Reservation. And so Standing Rock Reservation is down there. <laughs> well, I want to ask you, and, the reason why I'm bringing up the Sweat Lodge... I would like for you to really go yep. through that. Through that is because I will. the Catholic Church has a way of kind of uh, inculturation, of ta- of uh, of take kind of baptizing what other people have done and making it ours. And I know the Pope was just in Morocco, said some things that some of us are kind of concerned about. Uh, you know, how far do you go in uh, opening up to him to uh, cultivate a relationship? The word cult comes from the word religion. Yep. Uh, without uh, going too far, and, and I'm sure. 
this was a, an ex, a concern you had when you went into the sweatshop. Um, be, before we go into this, I want you to just tell me what the experience was like getting ready to go in preparation, and then we'll take a break, and then we'll get back and hear what you what you took as a, a with your uh, faithful to the magisterium Catholic faith in, and what you brought out from that. So tell us what it was like when you got there. What was the what was the reason all of that stuff? The reason that I did the sweat lodge, I'd always wanted to do a sweat lodge, and I actually taught uh, a class at the Catholic high school that I taught, Catholicism and World Religions, and part mm. of that was a week was a week on Native American spirituality, so they understood it. But here's the reason, and it's a, a beautiful reason. One of my dear friends, Father Josh Eli, who now is over in Rome serving the church as a Catholic priest, was about to be ordained, and his mm. mom, his mom has Native American roots. And he had served down on the reservation for a couple summers, and he asked me, which was uh, very humbling, and two other buddies, so there was four of us, if we would go and do a sweat lodge, actually we would say if we would go and do a sweat with him down on the reservation before now, his ordination. Now these were all Catholic men. All Catholic and men. And had he ever done it before? He had done it before because he had served down there, and he had did it with the Native people, yes. So he knew what he was getting himself into. We're yep. talking with Jerome Richter, who is the vice president of uh, public relations yep. and development okay. at the University of Mary, Bismarck, North Dakota, where I really want to go back. Maybe we'll be there at the end of August with our TV show, Long Ride Home. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You can uh, go to our website, deepadventure.com. Any place you go there, there's going to probably be an invite to click and subscribe to our newsletter. If you do, you'll get an invite to view this, t this our, our TV version, our video version of our radio show before it even airs on EWTN. And if you click on the right buttons, you can um, become a member, uh, a Patreon member, and make a donation. And you get to have the Long Ride Home TV shows months before the network even gets them. Uh, we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I have as a guest someone I feel I should say in <laughs> part one and part two, part maybe one of ten, but I love this guy, Jerome Richter. He uh, He's with the uh, University of Mary. We're going to talk about the experience of a sweat that he did with a, a, a brother who was about to become a priest. Uh, they're uh, uh, in the Dakotas, uh, Native American uh, sweat, and it, ex it explain his experience and what that intersection is between Catholicism and other faiths, what we have in common, and how we hold to the truth while um, while uh, embracing the upward yearning that all mankind have and is expressed through their culture, uh, through their religion. So Jerome, he says, we're going to go do a sweat. So you're thinking, yeah, maybe I've done hot yoga before. I could probably do that. Have you ever? What, what's the hottest you've ever been, room you've ever been in? Do you think, or situation the hottest, before the, then? Uh, the hottest situation I've ever been in is uh, shoveling a grain, a bin of grain, oh. in the middle of uh, August oh. for my dad inside the grain bin, shoveling oats, getting uh, nice and ripe and uh, sweaty. So probably about 100 to 125 degrees. And then, did we have to eat that grain, or was that fed to your meat, your, your I cattle? I think that was probably, that was probably fed to the cattle. So I'd so have I to eat your sweat at least. No. If if the if you would have <laughs> cleaned it. So uh, uh, yeah, tell that, me that, that would have been that would have been the worst uh, scenario that I'd probably been in before this in the sense of heat. But we went down there, and uh, Father Josh, soon to be Father Josh, as I said, had uh, Native American heritage, and he wanted to do this, and he wanted to bring some of his closest friends. And I'd always wanted to do a sweat, so it worked out beautifully. We didn't know exactly what we were getting into, uh, so on the way down, he said, "Hey, just start drinking water." I'm like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "Drink." water and just keep drinking water until you can't drink any more water. I'm like, well, I got it. So we're drinking water. Do wrestlers do that when they try to make weight? No, it's the other, other way around. So they never try to go up. That's how it's going yep, down. Yep, okay. Yep. They need a sweat lodge. There you go. There you go. <laughs> okay. So we get down there and uh, we met with uh, one of the elders who also was a Catholic man and who was about to be ordained a deacon. Wow. And so you spoke so beautifully, Bear, uh, about how the church handles these things rightly, which is the church never comes into a culture and destroys the culture. The church comes into a culture and says, what is the most beautiful things about these culture? Let's bring it into as much as we can into the faith. And let's, as you said, let's baptize it. Let's christianize it. Let's, let's not uh, 
take what is most good, true, and beautiful and slap it in the face. Let's bring it to it and then make sure that we continue to foster that in the good people. And so the sweat in its uh, very nature is not uh, intrinsically evil by any means. Now it's what you might be calling upon. And the Native American people, at least as I understand them here, the Lakota people, uh, they talk about the Great Spirit. And the Great Spirit takes different forms, and many of them have easily been able to uh, come into Christianity because the Trinity uh, does not cause them any difficulty because it's it's the Great Spirit. And so, yes, you got to be particular and you got to be careful that you don't become a heretic, but at the same time, you can enter into that discussion. So we get into the sweat lodge, and it's supposed to mimic a womb. So you have to crawl in. So it's, oh. about, th- it's about three feet tall. Uh, it's an earth lodge with a, a fire hole in the middle. There's no there's no hole for anything to go out, but just kind of a pit. And then they, they prepare you. So you're wearing swim trunks, let's say. Uh, you got to take all of the metal off. So my St. Jerome metal, uh, I had to It'd take off. It would burn you, wouldn't it? It would burn exactly. you. Exactly. Yep. You'd, you'd end up so, be branded like your calves. There you go. <laughs> you deserved so, it. <laughs> Most likely. <laughs> so anyway, they're heating up rocks in a big fire about 20 feet away from the lodge. Mm. And then they, they explain this and they say, so here's what's going to happen. We're going to bring the rocks in. Uh, we're going to shut the flap and it's going to get a little bit warm and toasty. And then when everybody's in and we're ready to go, then we're going to uh, add some water. And then that's when the steam comes. Well, Steam is hot. Hotter yep. than the air, yeah. Yep, and so uh, everything in Native American culture, they do it in fours, right? So the magic number for Native Americans would be 16, four times four. So mm. mag- magic number for uh, Christians is 144, right? 12 times 12, mm-hmm. 12 mm-hmm. tribes, 12 apostles, you know, three times uh, four, et cetera. You, you, can, you can go with these numbers. The number of fullness is seven, et cetera. Mm-hmm. But for them, it's four and then 16. So they do four rounds of a sweat. So they brought the rocks in. They brought in about 12 of the rocks. What, what time of day is this? Mid-afternoon. What's the temperature outside? Uh, 60 degrees, okay. 65. So when you first so go you, in, is it hot yeah, already? or? Well, cold? no, you, when you go in, you know, you're standing in swim trunks and so you're cold. Okay. You get into the sweat. They bring in the rocks and you can feel that they're, they got some heat on them. They shut the flap and it goes solid black. There's no light. I mean, it's dark. And then the guy who's running it, starts splashing water on the rocks and it's it's like they're punching you in the face i mean this heat this steam is just coming boom boom and then they start drumming right again it's mimicking the womb and so the heart the heartbeat wow and, and the whole time the whole time that this is happening the whole time that this is happening they they encourage you you have one intention well our intention was to pray for our brother who's about to be ordained a priest mm-hmm. and so for protection for him, for the Holy Spirit to come upon him. And I will admit, that steam, it hit us. And you start sweating and sweating. And then finally, you're just begging that they open up that flap. And this is and, just, what do you mean this round of four? One. This is, okay. This is just one. So they open up the flap. Well, how long like, is that? How long does that take? Uh, Seven minutes-ish. Oh, you know, they can, okay. They, they flip. Then they brought in more rocks. They didn't take they rocks begin. out. They don't take rocks. They brought out. more rocks in. <laughs> yep. And they after, they did the second round, and I don't know how many rocks they brought in, but it it was to the point where uh, we we laid down, because I actually thought to myself, I actually thought to myself that I could pass out and I'm going to fall into these rocks and nobody's going to see me. And the temperature's a little bit cooler on the ground, or no? Yeah, yeah, and the steam naturally rises. Right. So it's easier down low. Mm-hmm. So I actually laid back, and. I mean, I was a wrestler and I worked hard in my life, but I've never sweat like that in all my life. It was amazing. And finally, after the second round, they opened up the flap. And a couple of us, uh, I, I will admit I wasn't the first one, but I wasn't against it. We wussed out. And we're like, can we can we step out just for a little bit? Can we step mm-hmm. out? Mm-hmm. And uh, they, they let us step out. And as we were sitting there, I'm just shaking my head like, holy cow, this is serious business. And here's what's really humbling bear. There was a 16-year-old Native American girl doing the sweat with us, and she was mm. just totally at peace there, taking it in. <laughs> and here's a bunch of grown men that couldn't handle it. Wow. But I asked, I asked uh, one of the elders, I said, how hot is it in there when we're doing this? How hot is it? And he said, well, with that many rocks, 
I would say you're probably at about 270. And and I looked over at my buddy, and I hit him, and I said, "My mom cooks stuff at that temperature." <laughs> <laughs> and, and the old the old elder started laughing. He goes, "I've had it to where we've had 36 rocks in there, and it's probably gone up to about 400 degrees." I said, "How do you survive?" And he said, "Well, it's the it's the brevity of it, mm. and then you cool yourself back down." Mm. Long story short, we didn't make a true sweat because we broke after the second round, but we went back in for the other two. They were a little bit easier on us. They passed water around uh, to us. We finished that. An hour and a half later, we got on the road. I drank, and I'm not exaggerating, about 84 ounces of water, and it took me another two hours before I urinated. You know, I, I, it just <laughs> you sweat so much that we were so dehydrated. But it was it was a purification, is what it amounts to. It's a purification that you'd literally sweat this all out. And if you want to talk about intense prayer, it that's what I want to talk intense. about. Yep, it was great. So tell me, yeah, so you're 100 percent focused. No, I, so so, we got about two minutes there. You got to give it before we ha- mm-hmm. got to take a break. Tell me about what what happened there, spiritually, with you and your friend, the becoming what, what a priest. Happened, it was it was pure focus. It was pure focus. One of one of the guys that was with us said it best. He said, "If you're in a sweat like that, and you're not praying, I think you would die. It's either pray or die." And what's the prayer? <laughs> what was the prayer? The prayer was as uh, as simple as it gets, and it simplifies it. Because when you're feeling as though like the the world is squeezing you and the heat's coming down on you, you keep it really simple. Dear Lord, protect Father Josh. Protect Josh. Make him a holy man. And you just kind of, it's a repetition. It's the simplicity of it. And then in the meantime, you have somebody banging on a drum. Singing. and, and And you feel as though you are in a battle right there. It's taking place spiritually right there on your mind and on your heart in this dark place where only the Lord knows all things that are happening. It just keeps so, coming back to me. Great. It keeps coming back to me, the monks of the desert, North Africa, Egypt area, how hot it was. They went into the, they went into the desert basically to do battle with Satan. There you go. And uh, there was the drum beat, I'm sure. And yep. uh, they had that skull that may not all have had. They might have one book of Psalms or one chapter of Psalms or, or a gospel. They went in there. They went to battle, and that, that skull was there to remind them, hey, Memoria Morta, remember your death. They get you super focused when you're right on the edge. When you're well, right on the edge. that you, you St. Mm-hmm. Anthony of the Desert, yeah. uh, the, the, the first and the great of the church fathers of the desert, he, he, he said it very well. Keep it simple. That, Keep and it that's simple. what happened. And that's what happened there. My good friend Father exactly. Mark Goring is going out on a motorcycle ride right now by himself doing the millennial thing. I mean the minimalist thing. He used to be able to build a raft and float on it for a week and just look up to God uh, in Canada. And so, yeah, keeping it simple, the Jesus prayer, Jesus, Lord Jesus, Son of the living yep. God, have mercy on me, a sinner. The original hundred beads of the of the monks of the desert. Uh, keep it simple. Keep your mind on Jesus. Keep your mind on mm-hmm. God. Surrender to the Lord. And there's nothing like coming to the end of yourself to find yourself or coming to the end of yourself to be able to hear the door, the knocking on the door. Of Jesus saying, "Let me in." You know, it's a it's a great place to be. When you're dropping in on a big wave, you're not thinking about anything else but that moment. And coming to that still point is where you find love. Is where you can where where you have the opportunity to really find the joy of of that that in, that uh, communion with God. We're talking with Jerome Richter. We're going to talk about Knights of Virtues when we get back. He's at University of Mary in Bismarck, North Dakota. We've overextended this section by quite a lot. We'll be back with one more segment. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha and viva Cristo Rey, too. By the way, to all my buddies from Long Ride Home, all of our cast members and crew, viva Cristo Rey, long live Christ the King. You know, our, our guest today is Jerome Richter. He is the Vice President of Public Relations and... Uh, development at the University of Mary in Bismarck, North Dakota, which I was born in the Dakotas. But I re- we were talking about the sweat that he just went through, uh, well, not just, but went through with a friend of his who was about to be ordained a, a priest. And uh, now what I want to ask you about is basically, um, okay, well, that just take a moment because I want there's another subject I want to cover. But in that moment, in that, in that sweat lodge, what, what uh, was, there, was there something that God that you had an experience with the Lord in any direct way? or 
mean, was what what did the Lord speak to you personally, or did what sense did you have? That's a better way to say it. What what when you came out, your brother's life, who you prayed for, was changed. How did it change you? Yeah. That's the best way to say it. Yeah, it it, it changed me in this that uh, his priesthood, I'm responsible for, uh, as a brother, um, to pray for him. Here I have the privilege, right before he's about to receive holy orders, to be with him in this intense experience. And this is something, Baron, I want to thank you, even for this simple uh, chance to visit with you and reflect. We started talking about wrestling. We started talking about growing up. We started talking about the toughness of the prairies. We talked about the sweat lodge, all all these different things. We talked about uh, your activities. All of them have a certain element that uh, connects, and it's called physical activity and suffering isn't it amazing that we as a human being are attracted to and desire to put ourselves through pain what's up with that what is up with that yeah i asked my guys on the ride where we're freezing rain or riding through a hurricane in in cocoa beach or freezing rain up in new jersey like why do we like this yep we like it Mm mm-hmm we, we like it because it's in the intensity of that. It's in the full human experience that we remember, that we remember who we are, what Christ did for us, and who we are to each other. I, I promise you, I will never forget the guys that were my wrestling partners through my years of wrestling. And we, as you said, beat each other up. I mean, my best friend and I, we went at it, I don't know how many times, the poor guy for a year wore braces. And I bet you I busted up his lips a hundred times. And he wanted to punch me in the face. But when it was all said and done, we had blood together. And it's the same thing with with Josh. Now, Father Josh, when we were in that sweat, we had done a lot of things together, but this was something that we'll never forget. It's the same thing with travel. Uh, I've had the privilege of taking a lot of young people and old people on pilgrimage. Uh, When you travel, people's true character comes out. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. A a pilgrimage is not a party. It's it's adversity. (laughs) Uh, It's not a vacation, that's for sure. Yeah. Dude, uh, but okay, so I got to make a quick segue here. Um, yeah, when we rode together as the men, uh, there's a brotherhood that becomes because they those guys know what a jerk I can be. They absolutely know when you're the host, when you're the writer, when you're the when you're the leading leading the pack uh, of a TV show that's rolling 500 miles at a time. The worst of me can come out, and uh, I'll just go, man, I just failed so bad today. And they'll go, you were here with you, brother, and yeah, you better shape up. <laughs> But but I mean it brings out it brings out the most it brings out the best and a true brotherhood was formed, uh, it is formed in that in that in that context, and so then I talked about my bear's man cave and we have a code of conduct there which, I think is 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 needs to be strengthened because what do I see here, of this special group that's on your campus, the Knights of Virtue. Why did you start it and what about this code is awesome I love I'm looking if you're watching this on the video. Version by going to our website deepadventure.com you can see that code okay you got five minutes to explain yourself on this why the brotherhood why the code and is it for men only it's for young men only yep okay tell yep. us about that so uh the knights of virtue uh it's a long story and i'll try to wrap it up as quick as i can it actually started at the high school level so i was a uh, high school teacher taught at saint mary's central high school here in bismarck it's the catholic high school i've seen a pattern a- there I was I was the religious studies chair there, and uh, at a certain moment for five years, Monsignor James Shea, who's now the president of the University of Mary, was also the chaplain at the high school. And we, we worked so closely together that we realized that our students were missing something. We had great academics. We had a great sacramental program. We had great extracurriculars, but there was still something missing. And what I would tell you is missing is the human formation, right? Mm. Uh the human formation used to take place on a dairy farm just outside of Bismarck when you were milking cows and shoveling grain. But most and that's kids not all the, you shoveled, I bet. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay. There was many other things. And, and this, is, this is where today's world is so different. I have six boys and a girl, so I have seven kids. Mm. And I'm raising them in the city, and bear, I don't know how to do it. My dad mm. had a dairy farm to deal with his ten boys. Right. And so I, I got to see in my students that these young men are – dying for this interaction of discipline and how to learn virtue. And so many dads didn't feel confident in it. So uh, we decided each of the religious studies teachers, there was five of us, would start a group that was particular to both our desires and our gifts. 
And this is where Monsignor Shea uh, encouraged me. He said, you've been bellyaching that there's not enough virtue in our men, that these young men don't know how to learn virtue, so why don't you start something on virtue? And that's when we started the Knights of Virtue. And all we did, Bear, if you can believe this. Now, I was a wrestling coach, and I taught a lot of these boys, so I had a relationship with them. But we would meet in my garage. Mm -hmm. I, have a fire, I have a fireplace in the garage. Mm -hmm. And all we would do is sit around the fire, and we would talk about the four cardinal virtues. We'd talk about the three theological virtues. We'd break them down. And then we'd go through the code of chivalry, which you have in front of you. And we'd simply sit there and challenge each other. And then what would we do? What you and I have been talking about. We would do things that would cause us to suffer, but were enjoyable. We'd go paintballing and shoot each other in the back. That can hurt. It hurts bad. It, it seems like it, bad. all fun and game. But I had a guy shoot me once. I go, you know, I don't like anybody aiming any sort of gun at me. I always consider them loaded. He goes, yep. don't worry, the safety's on. I go, you're aiming at me. Don't worry, the safety's on. From about two two inches away, he shot me right in the in the stomach. I had a bruise there for weeks. It'll it can hurt. Well. Yeah. Even so though we, it had, we, I had my padding on, it still got through. Oh, wow. No, we had uh, we had a couple times. Where, yeah, but that's uh, good. That's It shows brotherhood. It shows you. It shows the confusion and how all that all that gets to when you get all that confusion, all that stuff out of the way, it breaks it down to like just just being a man. Well, and the boys want to do something that's both fun and uh, I, I don't like the word, but uh, macho. And then you take hey, that. Let's, let's and put it you that way. Let's put it this way. Let's call it manly. There you go. There I'm you not go. afraid to use that word. Yep. I don't talk about being masculine anymore. I talk about being manly. Manly virtue. I, that's what I a man is. That. Manly ver manliness is being as a man as being a man of virtue. Exactly, and they need to know how to do that. They need to be given permission and guidance and how to do that. And so this is what we'd do. So we would take them out. Uh, I grew up on the farm. My brothers would let me bring them out there. I'd bring. It went from 27 the first year to about 50 to about 70. And when I left the high school to come to the university, there was 96 members of the Knights. Praise of God! Praise God! So, we're, we're talking uh, two-thirds of the entire male population. And that's a Holy this. Spirit action plan there. You started Absolutely. it, but the Holy Spirit imbued that with his power and sure grace and attracted people. That's awesome. Just awesome. And out of, out of that group of young men, uh, in five years from the Knights of Virtue, I had uh, 12 young men that joined the seminary. And oh, today, my God. And today there's wow. uh, six of them. Wow. And, and then, this, and then mm -hmm. I, I went to the university in, in 2010 – I went to uh, the University of Mary, and when I got here, you know, I'm just getting my feet underneath me. I started in the development and the public affairs around, and within a year, I had five, six parents, one of them being the vice president for academic affairs here at the university, whose son was in my Knights of Virtue group at the high school, said, okay. you got to start it here. Okay, so we got to top. we got to stop. We're done. That's why I said we're going to have to do more than one show with you. We're going to get right Dang back. It. We're going to get you back on the show to talk about this, but we're talking with Jerome Richter. The Knights of Virtue, they can find you at um, cometomary.com or where can they find you? Because I think there's other universities that like to talk to you and get something like this started. Where can they find you? I would encourage you to do exactly that, Bear. Go to our website. It's cometomary.com. So the word come to, T-O, Mary, dot com. And that will show you who the University of Mary is but how, in how will they get a, How will they get a hold of you? Uh, they can call the switchboard here at the university. Okay. Okay, Jerome. They can, they can shoot an email. They can go on our forums. They can do okay, whatever. Okay, Jerome Richter, uh, thank you for joining us. We'll have you back as soon as possible. This is Bear Wozniak with the Bear, Bear Wozniak Adventure. As we say on Long Ride Home, Viva Cristo Rey. And as we say in Hawaii, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to bearwozniak.com to get your free audio and other exciting content. Plus, you can pick up the Long Ride Home 10-episode DVD set, autographed copies of Bear's books, Long Ride Home shirts, tanks, coffee cups, and even motorcycle pins and patches. And find out how guys can sign up for Bear's Man Cave online Facebook group, all at bearwozniak.com.